Hi, I'm Pastor Kurt, and this is your five-minute Bible study. Today, we're going to be looking at Numbers 13. Well, Numbers isn't really a book that a lot of people are familiar with, but there is some great stuff in here for us to pay attention to. Last week, when I talked about Numbers 12, I talked about how Miriam and Aaron got jealous of Moses and the way that God was working through him. Well, in the next chapter, in Numbers 13, we see a really neat scene, too. They've reached sort of the edge of the promised land. They're not quite entering the land yet. But Moses then sends some spies into the land to go check it out. Because they don't know what, what this land is like. There's people who are already living in that land. Sometimes we forget that. When we think about God giving the promised land to God's people, we forget that there were people already living there. So when Moses sends out these spies, he's asking them to go check it out. Go see what these people are like, go see what the land is like, and then come back and report to us so that we, we know what to expect. So they do. The spies leave, and then a little later on they come back with a report, and they tell Moses that the people living there are very strong, and they seem like giants. Now, when they say that, there's a man with Moses named Caleb. And Caleb says something like, ah, let's not worry about it. We can still go into the land. So Caleb still trusts God. He still thinks that they can enter this land no problem. But the spies then say that the people in the land were so big, so many, so huge, that they, the spies, seemed like grasshoppers. They seemed insignificant. They thought there was no way that they would be able to overpower these people. There's a couple really important things to notice in this scene. First, Caleb. Some pims were not so familiar with Caleb and his story, but what he says here is really important. He says that they can still trust God, they can still enter the land. Because of Caleb's trust in God, he will be one of only two people from the original generation who were in the wilderness who will be able to enter the promised land. It's Caleb and Joshua. Nobody else from that original generation goes in. Remember, they've been wandering around in the wilderness so long that basically one generation has died off and another generation's been born. So Caleb shows his faith in God. He says, no matter what these people are like, we can trust God, we can do this. Another thing to notice is that these spies say that they felt like grasshoppers. There's a neat book written by Carl Vaders, who is an advocate of small church ministry, and his book is called The Grasshopper Myth. And the point of the book is basically that sometimes small congregations can have this grasshopper mentality. They can look out at the world and think, oh, it's so overwhelming. There's no way that we can do anything about it. We seem like grasshoppers. We seem so small, so insignificant. But what Vader's reminds us in this book, and what we see as we continue on in the biblical story, is that God is still at work in what seems like small and insignificant people. Sometimes we think, oh, I can't do very much. What, what can I do in the face of these overwhelming obstacles? I just feel so small and so insignificant. But God is at work in you. Sometimes in our head, we have these two conflicting voices. We have the voices that sound like the spies that say, we're grasshoppers, we're too small, we're insignificant. And then we've got the voice of Caleb in our head saying, don't worry about it. Trust God. God will see us through. God will take care of this for us. This is an ongoing struggle that we all have. Thankfully, Caleb spoke up and reminded the people that they can trust God as they enter this new land. It's so easy to think of ourselves as just grasshoppers. But thankfully, Caleb reminds us that we can trust God. And hopefully, you have people in your life who can remind you that you can trust God in the midst of whatever challenges you are facing. There's your five-minute Bible study for today. 
Please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.